Giddy's been unbelievable the last two two outings. Obviously, unfortunately, I wasn't at the last one. I was actually with my family in Arizona, but. Um, seeing that stat and listening to the guys talk about that one and then to come back against the same team and put up this performance and, and go almost eight innings like that is is remarkable in the minor league. You don't see it that often and for him to have that command and be able to control this team like that, you know, there's a lot of good hitters over there, um, some first rounders and everything like that. And he uh, he gave us a chance and that's what we asked for every single day. It was a pretty good mix of it. Like there was a lot of off speed stuff, I think uh, about 30 change ups. Uh, I mean, yeah. just a, a variety of stuff that you get to see from yeah, that's that's his strength. They're like he's able to throw three pitches for strikes and um, throw it when he wants to. Um, you know, he's not afraid to go three-two breaking ball, three-two changeup. You know, he's very confident in those pitches. And um, you know, we're looking forward to seeing what he does the next time out. And um, you know, our staff is really good. We have a lot of good arms, which has carried us this far. And we need them to continue doing what they do. When, uh, when you get an outing like that, but you're not able to, to come out with the win, does it, does it make it more frustrating uh, knowing that, that you, you weren't able to get the win in that situation? Yeah, naturally, you want them to, uh, to be able to back up that type of performance. But um, you know, it, it comes down to a lot of other things. You know, there's a lot of execution uh, that we didn't do. And, um, but like I told these guys after, like, I want them to play in these games. Like, we haven't really played in too many close like eighth, ninth inning where we're down by one, and we need to do little things like that. And, um, I want them to feel that because I can't replicate that in practice. You know, they have to feel it themselves. They have to know um, what mistakes like can cost a game and when to hold back and when to turn it on and everything like that. So we use it as a learning experience again. It seems like you guys were getting a lot of runners on base and had a lot of opportunities. Uh, were, were you seeing when guys got on base? Were you seeing guys panic at the plate? Or, or what was going on when guys got on base and you weren't able to drive them in? Um, no panic. I just think, you know, they, the guy was pitching well for their side too, you know, you got to kind of tip your hat to them and um, these guys will put good ABs together. Obviously, like in the ninth inning right there, we, we had a chance, which they've done numerous times this year and um, that's all I can ask for. Like I can put yourself in an opportunity to, to win or to score and let the chips fall where they may. What are your thoughts on Gabriel and just kind of his strengths as a player and where you see him kind of fitting in on this roster? Um, you know, like, it, it, I've seen him a little bit, obviously, in spring training. Um, had him in instructional league last year. Uh, very defense-oriented. Um, there's talks that he might even be a little bit more um, polished in the infield than Tatis was. You know, um, obviously, like a lot of stuff, it's hard to say that. But just if you're a baseball guy and you watch him on a daily basis, the little things he can do. You know, he's only 17, 18 years old and um, is highly regarded, top prospect uh, at the lower levels. and. Um, they want to push him and, and get him and see what he can do. Um, but he's a talented player. You know, he has to get his feet wet. Um, I'm glad that he's here right now so he can play in these games and, and get used to this atmosphere. He's been playing in Arizona, which is completely different. If you've never been out there, you know, there's nobody at the games. You're playing against uh, a talent that's obviously a lot lower. Um, but for him to get exposed and be ready to play against this level is good for him. I was going to say, how much do you think? Obviously, he's there in the in the bottom of the ninth, a chance to tire and win the game, and he comes up short. But I guess in the future, how much will, will being having gone through those situations help him? Yeah, he, um, like I said before, like you can't replicate that feeling. You can't replicate being put in that situation with two outs and having to come up for your team. Um, and the more chances he gets to do that, the the easier it'll get as he, he moves on with his career. Uh, talking about Fernando, I guess, um, what was your reaction when you got the news that he was going to be called up? Um, well, I gave him the news, so, you know. But I, I'm, it's well-deserved. The, the kid is an unbelievable talent. Um, you know, he, he's done some stuff here at, at, at 18 years old that nobody thought he would do. You know, he breaking home run records, doing stuff in the infield, making ESPN um, at 18 years old. Um, the kid is a special talent, and uh, the Padres see him um, as the future shortstop. And you know that's what this level is all about. You want these guys to um, be successful. You want them to move up fast, and you want them to get to the big leagues as quick as they can to help that team. That's their number one priority. Um, so when it was told to me, it wasn't a shock. You know, like I, you don't see that talent every single day. You know, um, and. We move on, we make the, the most of it with the team we have, and we, we keep plugging along. What was his reaction when you told him? Um, slightly shocked a little bit, you know. Um, uh, obviously, he got a little bit of, uh, emotional just because of 
um, I think, where we are in the season. And he's leaving a team that are, is really close to him. And, but he's going to another group of guys that um, is a special group. You know, I, I coached and, and been with a lot of those guys at that level in AA. And um, it's going to be a good addition to that team. And hope, I hope the best for him. I hope he pushes that team to win a championship in AA. Um, final one about Fernando. Obviously, you, you get him as an 18-year-old, and there's a lot of growing still going on with him. Where have you seen him grow the most, be it on the field or off the field, during the time you spent with him? Um, you know, it's a slow process, but the maturity and how he deals with things is what we're trying to develop in him probably more than anything. Um, being able to separate the game, offense and defense, being able to um, go out there and be a professional on the field. Um, and the first half was a, a definitely a grind for him and myself and the whole team, just learning how to go about your business. Um, but I think he's starting to get it. I think he's starting to know how to work and be a professional even better than he was before. And um, I contribute his success in the second half to a, a lot of those things. Honestly, uh, sad that he's leaving. I'm happy he's getting the opportunity to go up well-deserved. I honestly thought it was going to be a lot sooner than that, and they kept him around. And I, I guess to break that home run record, I'm very proud of that. One of my best friends that I've had in this organization, I'm so proud of him at that age to do what he's done and accomplish here. He deserves to go up, man, and I'm, I'm beyond happy for him, and I'm excited to see what he does up there to help them uh, in their playoff run. What, uh, what makes him one of your best friends? Like, where do you guys connect off the field? Just a, he's just a good-hearted guy, man. He cares genuinely about each and every one of his teammates. Uh, I, I've never heard him say anything bad, honestly, about anybody. I can honestly say that about him. And just his smile and his presence brings a different light in the dugout. And he's going to bring that wherever he goes. No, no matter what team it is, he'll bring that with him. You say that that's where you guys are going to miss him the most, not necessarily his. his I mean, I've, obviously, his on the field contributions speak for themselves, but as just kind of a, a guy in the clubhouse, is that where he'll be missed the most with you guys? I, I'm, I made it a funny analogy today to one of my teammates. He's like the meat in between a hamburger. It's just without without his presence and all that, it just it doesn't. It's not the same. But I mean, yeah, of course, with his personality and everything, he just that what he brings. It brings a spark in the dugout and. That's what it takes to sometimes light a fire. Like in those late innings, you know you got him and he can get on base at any time or change the game with one swing. And he's just one of those guys, man. And yeah, I'll miss that. I'll miss that a lot. Where uh, today, obviously, you guys you guys got a lot of runners on base and had some opportunities there. Uh, where did you see you get, your, your team fall short today when it comes to getting guys home? Just like uh, AC said today, it was just that, that's one of those games, just like a that's probably as close to a playoff game as you're going to get that just that atmosphere and uh, it was going to be the team that made the mistake first and we just happened to make that mistake first we didn't swing the bat as well as we could it was a pitching duel and uh, just we made we made the first mistake and they capitalized on it and we just couldn't couldn't fight back there. What are your thoughts on Pedro obviously he was dominant the last time he faced those guys and to to bounce back off of that and have another outing similar uh, to, to what he had that last time today. What are your thoughts on uh, what he gave you guys? I think he threw very good. He threw three pitches for a strike, and he commanded that curveball. And you got a guy doing that. It doesn't matter what level you're at. It's going to be hard to hit, and he did that very well today.